specifically today, we want to talk about moving data from your legacy Oracle systems to your Osiris real-time um, systems. And um, this is our agenda for today. Uh, we'll do like very quick introductions, uh, talk a little bit about um, why real-time data ingestion is a bit more difficult than you know you might expect. Um, we, then, of course, we'll introduce the Equilum platform uh, solving those challenges. Talk a little bit about um, our Equilum Connect platform and uh, share some customer use cases. I know this sounds like a, a long deck, but I promise you guys, this is gonna be a very quick deck and we're focused on the last part, which is our demo, live demo. And of course, leave some uh, time for Q and A Q&A at the end. All right. <clears throat> so uh, let's start off by uh, introducing myself. So um, I'm uh, Erez Oshek, the uh, VP of product for Equilum. Um, I'm a data guy. I've been a data guy for uh, quite some time now. I did a lot of time. I mean, uh, well, what, actually, that JD will love that. I, I did some time, sounds like jail time, when talking about Oracle, that might uh, resonate, right, JD? That's so absolutely did, right. Yeah, I did some time uh, uh, doing Oracle uh, uh, DBA, about 20 years of that. Uh, I did also some MySQL and uh, SQL Server, uh, mostly Oracle. During that time, uh, I've done a lot of um, data replication, data migration, and EPL projects uh, with various tools, uh, various needs, various use cases. And the only common thing is that I, I've always found them extremely complicated, uh, cumbersome, and, and you know, tedious. So I know how challenging those projects can be. And uh, that's pretty much why I joined Equalum around three and a half years ago uh, as the VP product to kind of um, help others do exactly that. And I was happy to find a group of data enthusiasts, uh, which are, a lot of us are DBAs, uh, data scientists, architects, and developers, all with a lot of data background, um, you know, kind of understanding the, the pain points of, uh, of data and data ingestion in particular. And we've all, uh, kind of, we are all committed to two things, basically, liberating data, meaning that, um, you, you do not need to um, you know, uh, be a kind of a slave of the, the operational platform that, that stores your data at the moment if you wanna use that data for other purposes. Um, we, I know moving data out of a, a database or out of a system is super complicated, uh, but it can be made much, much easier. So that's why we call it liberating the data. And uh, in general, making real-time data ingestion at scale easy. That's uh, what Equilum is all about. And with that, uh, let's talk, you know, a couple of seconds on why real-time data ingestion is so hard, right? So um, the first part of real-time data ingestion is basically getting the data out of your systems or your mo most, most uh, commonly the operational databases or operational systems, uh, which hold your actual live production data and extracting changes from those data sources is very, very complicated because a lot of times it's done in a very intrusive way, just going in, querying data every hour or every minute or every night. Uh, those are very, very uh, intrusive operations, which usually uh, will not be permitted during daytime or during peak hours. Uh, and also doing that in massive scale, if you have a lot of data, a lot of changes in the data, Getting that data out of the systems is not, not an easy task, uh, let alone if you want to do it in real time because you want to consume the data in real time. So the first part, basically, uh, the, the, the first enabler for real-time data ingestion is getting the data out of your systems. And we'll talk a lot about how Equilum does that uh, in a very effective, non-intrusive way. The next step is, all right, so you got your data out of the system. How do you now transform the data to a structure and a format that is usable straight away on the other side? I'd like to uh, interject here. Um, from my experience, that's actually one of the more challenging parts, right? Because when we're talking about something like a legacy Oracle database who doesn't do proper data typing or doesn't have certain types like Boolean and then you're ingesting it into Postgres, you have to, if you're doing CDC, we have to be able to transform that on the fly. Is that your experience? 
Exactly. Yeah. So this is um, this is one type of transformation with uh, which is associated with uh, database migration. You want to migrate off of a platform into another one, uh, and you have all these challenges, just like you mentioned. You know, uh, data type conversion, some logic that is done a bit differently on different database platforms. Uh, yeah, that is exactly you know one of the pain points that people experience. Uh, other than that, there's also uh, more. Um, let's say business logic that you want to implement. So for example, let's say that you have changes occurring on your Oracle database and you want to move them to your uh, Postgres uh, data warehouse, right? right? And you want the data to be aggregated in order for the report system to use that, right? So usually traditionally you would, you know, load the data into a staging area and then perform the aggregations every day or every hour. But if you want to consume the data in real time, you need the data aggregated on the spot. So um, aggregated, clean, cleaned or cleansed, um, uh, joined. You want, may want to join a few data sets. You may, may want to um, you know, filter out bad data or fix the data to be um, uh, good and correct. All this um, should be done, if you want to consume the data in real time, it should be done in real time between the time you, you extracted the data until you loaded it to your target. So that is uh, another layer of uh, complexity in these kind of projects. So extracting the data, transforming it to uh, a format and, and a, a structure that can be used in real time, and then doing that for hundreds of, or thousands or tens of thousands of, uh, of uh, tables, right? Or ingestion processes while automating it, managing it and monitoring it, now that becomes a nightmare. Right? You can still do everything I mentioned uh, with scripts or you know, your own procedures if it's you know, like five tables that you know very well, but doing all that in scale uh, really becomes a nightmare, especially if you're doing it with like scripts and command lines and stuff like that. Well, wouldn't that be one of the value adds of a packaged product? Sure. Because I mean, open source folks, I mean, I'm an open source guy, right? And I, I love the not invented here and being able to code my own you know, I want it to work just this way. But as I've grown as a professional, I realized I've got better things to do. So the return, one of the return on investments here is that you take that nitty gritty op level automation and monitoring away from yourself and you put it into this platform. And that way I can focus on actual interesting tasks. Exactly, I, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, uh, we all love, we, we, I assume that we're all, you know, hands-on people. Uh, I can still say that about myself. Uh, and I love, and you'll see that in a second in the demo, you'll see the, the nice Equilum UI, but you also see, uh, you know, command lines, which I'm going to use. And, and I still love doing that. But um, as you say, I used to love that much more when I had, you know, much less to do, <laughs> you know, the, the, the earlier days of my career. But then when you're managing much more databases, much more data, and you have, you know, the business requires you to do a lot more than just, you know, managing the database, right? Then all of a sudden you find anything that can uh, kind of uh, um, help you be productive, you find it very useful, right? So uh, UI-based tools, uh, which automate things and manage and monitor the things for you so you don't need to kind of refresh on a, on a system to, to check the status is something that I think is invaluable when you have much more complicated tasks to do. And I don't want to uh, divert too much here, but I, I'm, I'm interested in your point four before you get started on this, because mm -hmm. you, you got two buzzwords here, enterprise mm -hmm. grade and no coding required. From experience, I mean, you're a tech too. You know that you know, no coding required sometimes is not quite as up to snuff as people would like. And then enterprise grade is really a marketing term. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it's something that I think we need to define here so that people don't feel like we're just, you know, throwing the buzzwords out there. And from what I've learned about your software, it truly is enterprise grade and what that actually means. Can you define that per your definition? Sure, sure, sure. So first of all, uh, again, the, the deck is going to be pretty short and everything that is written here uh, will be demonstrated live. Uh, in enterprise grade, what we, uh, what we mean usually, or what our customers need, is first of all, scalability, high availability. So you wanna, uh, high availability is a must, right? Uh, so you wanna 
be able to recover from any failure. You want to keep going, right? You want to be uh, available. Um, scalability is another issue, right? Where uh, data grows, you need more and more power. You pretty much want to be able to process any amount of data in a reasonable amount of time. Um, um, other aspects might include exactly once semantics and in general recovery from failures. So uh, we, Equilum guarantees data to arrive from source to target exactly once, not twice and no, and not none at all, like not, not at all. We actually guarantee data to arrive only once. Now, this sounds uh, very, um, you know, straightforward or very easy to do for, uh, you know, database guys, but, but I mean, data, I mean, the da databases guarantee that most of them. Uh, but uh, moving data around the enterprise in high scale where anything can break, you know, in the middle, the source, the target, the software, like the Equalum software, network, disk, whatever, still guaranteeing that exactly one semantics is not an easy task. Uh, and I can go on like about monitoring and security and all that. Uh, and we definitely have all these enterprise needs in place and ready for an enterprise user. Uh, and I'll show some of those as we go. The no coding required part is, is also extremely uh, important. It's actually part, a big part of our offering. Uh, if you have to start coding, you know, within the platform for doing any, you know, each one of your data ingestion uh, pipelines, uh, then I feel we haven't, you know, given any value at all because you can do all that yourself. So although Equalum does offer some coding capabilities for the people who insist on coding their own code. And we refer to those as user defined, uh, you know, functions or user defined operators or a bunch of other pl like pluggable capabilities. Equalum is intended to use in a non coding way. So everything is done is in a super simple UI, which you'll see in a second, um, which really drives productivity up. Our customers basically attest that Equalum's UI is more productive, like three times more productive than other, uh, other tools that have you know, similar uh, concepts and much more than that for doing stuff yourself than doing stuff yourself in, in you know, scripts and code. So, um, <clears throat> so these, this is the uh, kind of an overview of the Equalum platform. And uh, as you can expect, um, we actually aim to solve all the challenges that I just talked about. So the platform is kind of in the middle between your sources on the left to your targets on the right and we're going to focus today on, on Oracle to Postgres, but uh, Equalum supports a lot of different data sources and targets. So basically, you can get data off of your cloud services, uh, different RDBMS, um, NoSQL databases, applications like SAP, Salesforce, and so files on S3 or on HDFS or on your local file system, uh, and so on and so on, message queues. We have a lot of different data sources. And then on the other side, we have a lot of different data targets. Again, cloud services, database, data lakes, and, and so on and so on. Um, what we do as, you know, in, in between those data sources and targets is, first of all, of course, we extract the data from the data sources. Just like I said, we do that in real time in a non-intrusive way. Now, I don't know how many of you uh, are from, uh, many of you are familiar with the CDC. CDC change, uh, stands for Change Data Capture. <clears throat> and that is a methodology of extracting changes in real time as they occur from different systems. Uh, at being a methodology, it's not a technology, it's a, a set of principles that basically say, let's get the data non-intrusively as changes occur on the source. And the implementation of that methodology for each source is very different because each source works in you know, different technologies and, and uh, different ways. So the first part, yeah, JD, you want to ask? Oh, I was going to ask, what is the most unique data source that you have? Um, so that actually depends on your definition or, or your needs, but um, we, can, um, we can do, we can actually read, uh, you know, uh, low level events from files and databases, uh, but we also have the ability to read business level application level entities from applications like, again, SAP, Salesforce, Facebook, and a bunch of more applications. And those are pretty unique because what you get is not the low level entity. You can get a business uh, object, uh, which is actually 
um, uh, you know, it, it might reside in like 20 tables in the database, uh, but you get a, any change on the uh, high level entity, like let's say an order, right? In an e-commerce uh, system might be a complex object with the order, the order lines, the product uh, within inventory, maybe some promotions, and so on and so on, maybe the user details uh, like the, the uh, customer. So this will be a complex hierarchical object that we will treat as one CDC event. Every time it changes, we can get that event and treat it as one event with all the data within. So that is uh, kind of unique. Um, and uh, I mean, we have a lot of different data sources, so um, each one of them can suit you know, different needs. Great, thank you. Sure. Uh, so we got the data. And again, I will talk more about CDC and how we do CDC just in the next slide, uh, pretty much. But um, that is a big part of, of the offering because, again, uh, CDC is about getting the data changes uh, of the data as they occur non-intrusively uh, off of the system, which enables uh, you know, this to be done on a production system 24-7. So you don't have batch uh, processes running all night long for hours and then failing and getting into the um, you know, uh, day window just to be stopped and restarted next night. You don't have uh, the lag of you know, collecting data only once a day. You have fresh data coming in all the time without impacting the source system. Um, so that is what CDC is about. And Equalum has a very big uh, robust library for CDC, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, the next part, is transforming that data. So like I said, we can do source to target replication, which I'll demonstrate uh, very soon. Um, so that will means like every change from your Oracle system will go instantly into your Postgres system, whether it's on cloud, on-prem or whatever it is. But we have more complicated capabilities to do real-time transformations on the data still in real time. So as a change is streamed into the system, you can transform that data, uh, add new columns, remove columns, add calculated fields. Um, you might want to do in-memory lookups to kind of join a few different data sets. So theoretically, you can join your Oracle data with another Postgres operational data and another um, DB, DB2 data uh, all together to one event and push that event to your Postgres data warehouse. And you can do that in real time. Uh, you can aggregate data in real time, you can filter data in real time, and so on and so on. We have full-blown ETL capabilities, transformation capabilities, uh, but the difference uh, between that and most ETL tools that is it can be done in real time on uh, a per event basis. As an event comes in, it will be transformed and pushed immediately to the target. When pushed to the target, we have various ways of doing that as well. You can either append data, meaning that it doesn't matter what operation happened to the source, whether it's an insert, update, or, or delete, we will log that data in your Postgres data warehouse or data lake. We will say, this is what happened, an insert, an update, or a delete. Um, on the other side, we have a replication mode which says, if it was an insert, we'll insert the data. If it's an update, we'll update the data. If it's a delete, we'll del delete the data, keeping the source and target in sync. And their third option is a merge or upsert operation, which means um, if the data is there, <clears throat> we'll update it to the newer values. If it's not there, we'll insert the values. So overall, as you uh, might uh, you know, get the sense so far, this is a multi-purpose tool for pretty much ingesting data from anywhere to anywhere, either for application or for complex uh, real-time ETL. Uh, so data is ready for consumption on the other side uh, a second or two later, sometimes less. Um, <clears throat> like we mentioned, the main, um, the main points um, you know, we want to talk about here is unlimited data scale. Um, uh, I mean, I mean, unlimited data volume, we can scale from uh, you know, uh, a few rows per second to a few million rows per second of changes. Um, we have a very low latency uh, because of the change data capture approach uh, combined with a real-time transformation approach. Right. And zero, yep. Yeah, I think on the next slide, we discussed that a little bit, right? About the low latency and how you achieve that with Postgres? Yeah, sure, sure. 
So um, just to give you a quick idea of use cases uh, you might be interested in. Uh, so first of all, uh, extracting changes in real time from your data sources, that a, a lot of time that is you know, the need by itself. You wanna extract the changes um, and be able to react to those. And that can be leveraged for, like we said, replicating your Oracle data to Postgres, um, any Oracle to any Postgres, uh, RDS to RDS, RDS to on-prem, whatever, any Oracle to Postgres. Uh, you might want to replicate your operational Postgres system to your data warehouse based on Postgres. Uh, you might want to migrate your data from on-prem to the cloud. You might want to publish your changes from the Postgres database to a PubSub system like Kafka, uh, and so on and so on. And, and again, uh, talking, uh, mentioning again, you want to do that in real time without writing a single line of code. <clears throat> so uh, we have only like two, three more slides. So uh, um, I mean, the demo will be up in, in like uh, five minutes or so. So um, our, our CDC connectors, this is definitely not the full list. This is just a few that I thought might be interesting. Um, uh, we have uh, a bunch of um, uh, relational databases, but also files and applications. And uh, what I want to mention here is basically just give you an idea of how we do CDC. So um, in order to do CDC, basically, if you're talking about relational databases, each one of those have a similar concept of, uh, each one of them has their own binary logs or write ahead logs or transaction logs or redo logs or each platform calls them a bit differently, but those uh, are usually the consistency layer of that database. And those are, the logs actually log every action done on the database, not for CDC, not for us. It actually does it for recovery purposes. So uh, whenever you, the database fails, you can roll, roll back or roll forward the data uh, to get to a consistent point in time. And that is like an internal mechanism each database stores uh, for, uh, again, backup, for uh, recovery, for consistency. Um, okay, Eros. Yep. We got a I got a couple questions here, which I think are appropriate. Um, both of them are kind of meat, what I would call a meat question. Uh, the first one is, is what is it that you're using? I mean, obviously, it's logical decoding with PostgreSQL, but how do we ensure a low latency of CDC from your source to your target? Because in certain transactions, in certain you know, work models, low latency is absolutely key. Yep. Uh, so the key here is, um, first of all, using, uh, like you said, we are in, for PostgreSQL, we're using logical decoding. Uh, which I, I assume uh, a lot of you are familiar with. So that is a um, uh, kind of a, um, a, a framework to analyze the, the data in the logs, right? Um, in the right ahead logs uh, and, and uh, get the changes decoded from the binary format that is stored in into um, a, a more readable format, right? So um, Postgres by itself offers a pretty low latency um, logical decoder where you can uh, you know, get the changes that occurred in, uh, on the database in pretty much real time. So that is, um, that is the basis, right, for all this CDC and replication part. If I move forward to this you know, kind of explanation, so this slide, so we use logical decoding to get the changes, right? So some of you might say, all right, so that is the, that's the heavy lifting, right? That's the, the, the tough part getting the changes out of the database, right? We talked about how difficult that was. But that is only the beginning, right? After you do that, you're faced with a lot of other, you know, problems and issues. First of all, CDC data is great, but CDC data can only, is only changes that can be applied on the current contents of that table or database, right? So before starting to apply changes, you need to first obtain the full copy of all the data in the table. So before you start collecting changes, you need to do what we call an initial capture of all the historical data in those tables or in the database or schema. So um, that is one part doing, you know, because changes you can have, you know, like, I don't know, like 1% of the data changes daily, right? But you still need to load 100% of the data as a baseline. So that can, in some cases, these are, you know, a lot of terabytes of data that you have to um, move around just to start your replication process. So, so before course, we, 
no? before we move on with that, um, the, the second meat question, um, which comes back to enterprise grade, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is important because it actually applies directly to CDC as well as what you're going to go into with like queuing tables to catch things up. Um, now, we all know Postgres never crashes, but when legacy Oracle crashes, how do you know what point you were at when it restarts? Yeah, very, that's a very good question. And we actually spent a lot of time covering all the, these different scenarios. So uh, what we do is we have across the tool from you know, our Equilum Connect platform that reads data from the source, uh, and then it stores data in, um, in an intermediate storage within Equilum, and then data is uh, picked up by our processing engine and finally written to the target. So there's a bunch of steps here. And in each of those steps, we have checkpoint mechanisms that um, allow us to keep track on what we read, what we read and what we wrote for, um, to the next step. So basically, uh, we keep everything transactional. So um, while we read data and we write data to the next step, we log everything we've done in a transactional way. So if something fails in the middle, we know exactly where to pick up from. So um, this, is a, this is exactly how we guarantee our exactly one semantics, uh, by keep, keeping checkpoints of you know, everything we read, everything we wrote in each part of the application so we can survive a source failure, an equilum failure, a target failure, a network failure, anything that fails, we will definitely uh, continue from the exact same place where we uh, uh, stopped last time. Okay, great, thank you. Sure. And that is actually a big part of, uh, um, of the problem here, right? A lot of, um, uh, a lot of organizations who try to do uh, stuff, uh, th these kind of stuff with uh, either open source components or by themselves uh, are faced with this exact problem. And a lot of them sacrifice the exactly one semantics because it's just too difficult and they uh, settle for at least one semantics, which means that you can get the data twice at the target. And uh, for some use cases, that's, that's fine. But in a lot of use cases, right, if you, wanna, if you actually rely on your data at the target, you wanna get that data exactly once. So this is actually a very big problem in, this, in, in data ingestion and in real-time data ingestion in, in particular. So yeah, yeah, thanks for asking, it's a um, uh, very important point. So other points that you might want to cover when doing replication or real-time data ingestion is so you, you got or you managed to do the 100 terabyte data load into your target, but how do you synchronize the CDC data with the initial capture data, right? So you have, you, you managed to load the entire data, but now you need to only apply changes from the exact same point in time where you read the initial capture data from. So this is a big task also for each one of these databases. And uh, we've actually implemented, again, different techniques for each database to synchronize the initial capture data with the CDC data. So again, we guarantee two things. First of all, we'll first apply the initial capture data to your target, because if I try to delete a record that is not yet there, I'll get an error. So I need to first apply the initial capture data and only then the CDC data. But other than that, we also uh, guarantee that we will not, you know, send data twice, uh, part of it as, as initial capture and part of CDC, and we will not lose data in the um, kind of, uh, in, in the um, uh, point where initial capture and, and, uh, stops and CDC starts. So we guarantee exactly once, we guarantee ordering of events, and all that is not very easy to achieve. The next part, all right, so you got your CDC data, you got your initial capture data, but where, all right, so you extracted them out of database. What's next, right? So a lot of times you wanna do a multi-table or a schema or even a full database replication to another target, right? So you want to have everything automated, right? You want uh, the tool to create your target tables for you. You want the tool to synchronize all DMLs or all changes, but you also want to maybe react to changing schema at the source, right? Schemas change very often. And uh, if you add a column, for example, you want that change propagated all the way to the target so replication does not break. So um, that is another piece you have to, um, you know, enable on top of the CDC. Of course, if you're looking to do real-time transformation, 
um, that is something, again, you have to put in place. You might want to write to multiple targets in multiple formats and not just, you know, one-to-one -one replications. Um, just like you mentioned before, JD, you want your source data types to be converted properly to your target data types. So if you try to, uh, let's say Oracle stores uh, things as a number or whatever, uh, and you know you want that data as, um, you know, like a big end or whatever um, uh, other more specific data type, uh, you want the tool to be able to implicitly convert the data from the source to the target. Again, not necessarily an easy task. Uh, so these are just a few example, examples of what uh, replication and, and real-time ingestion entails that is not part of the low-level CDC. That's just the beginning of, uh, of the process. And of course, like I said, you want to do all that with a zero-coding UI. You want to have built-in monitoring and alerting. You want to have exactly one guarantees. You want to have high availability in place and uh, a lot of other bunch of stuff that, uh, that um, you know, you need for a uh, 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 an enterprise grade 24 seven tool. Um, I'll try to do this more, you know, uh, salesy part very quickly. Uh, I'm not gonna stop on each slide, but um, um, just uh, we, we work with a lot of different companies worldwide. Not all of them are big enterprises. Uh, this is just a standard, um, you know, um, uh, slide from our deck, but uh, uh, we work with a lot of different companies across industries uh, for a lot of different use cases. A lot of them are real-time uh, analytics or real-time data warehousing uh, use cases. Um, I have a, a few examples here. Uh, again, we'll just um, go over them just uh, in like a couple words on each. Um, so companies like Siemens doing supply chain optimization based on real-time data. Uh, EOG Resources, an oil and gas company in Texas, they do actually an interesting use case of uh, uh, analyzing and monitoring their sensor data from the drilling wells um, uh, to uh, kind of uh, alert on any safety issues and production level, um, you know, uh, uh, aspects. Uh, Warner Brothers do marketing campaign analysis. The um, the ones of you are watching CW shows, for example, they advertise those on social media and they want to get you all to watch those on your on-demand app or website. Um, so they analyze how each post makes you guys go and watch the show. Uh, so a bunch of, you know, uh, we talked about the technical use cases. These are more uh, a bunch of uh, um, uh, more business use cases for real-time data ingestion. And with that, I want to switch to Equalum. So um, this is Equalum. And uh, basically, as you would expect, on the left side, we have data sources. On the right side, we have data targets. And the first thing I want to show with Equalum is, uh, is a replication process and how it's done in Equalum. So we have sources, targets, and what we call replication groups. So in this environment, we have an Oracle CDC source and a Postgres CDC source, and we have a Postgres target. Um, uh, when you create a source in Equalum, all you have to do is pretty much supply the, the um, uh, credentials and, you know, and access details to the database. And of course, we have a lot of advanced settings like, um, um, you know, schema evolution settings, which basically means what, what should I do when a field is added at the source, right? Should I ignore that? Should I replicate that all the way to the end or to the target? Or should I do it like manually? I only evolve um, the data capture process and alert you uh, to, to kind of react to that. And then we have a bunch of more settings for um, uh, um, performance aspects and, and so on and so on. But basically, uh, if you create a source, this is all you need to provide. All the rest, you should use the defaults unless otherwise um, uh, needed. So I have created the Oracle source and the password source. So uh, the next thing I want to do is create what we call a replication group. So for that, I have five tables um, on the Oracle side waiting to be replicated to Postgres. So if I switch to my um, uh, DBiver, uh, whoever you're familiar with it as a you know, database client, like a universal database client. So on the Oracle side here, uh, I have these five tables uh, that I, I wanna replicate, staging tables one to five. 
Uh, on the Oracle side, you can see each one of them at the moment has 500,000 records. And I want to replicate them to my process environment, which at the moment uh, does not have these tables. So I'm kind of starting from scratch here. So uh, switching back to Equalum, what I'll do here is I'll just create what we call a replication group. I'll cause um, Oracle to Postgres. I'll select my source, which is in this case, the Oracle source. And I'll select my target, Postgres target. I'll select which schema I want to write the data to. So I want to replicate to the Equalum schema in the Postgres database. And then all I have to do now is choose the tables I want to replicate. And for that, I don't need to do that one by one. We have the concept of patterns. So I can choose one or more schemas, right, that I want to replicate data from the Oracle database. So I'll choose Equalum for now. And let's start with just giving, you know, I want all tables. So I'll generate the list of tables. And now I see that uh, this actually, we have more tables than what I want to replicate. So I can add another pattern saying, maybe I want to exclude all the tables that are called something TMP something. So if I repopulate here, we see that we have now less tables, but I still have two tables here that I don't want to replicate. So either I create another pattern for them, or I just quickly manually exclude them and you'll see them in the explicitly removed tables. So what I have now is the five tables I wanted to replicate. And the next step would be to validate that we have enough permissions, both on the source and target, to read and write those tables. So uh, in this case, we do have all the permissions, so we can move on to the next phase of actually creating the replication group. As you see, we have a new object here, our replication group. If I drill down into it, you see with, that we have the five tables. And in a second, you'll see Equalum starting to load data this is the initial load data, initial capture. We're starting to collect data from the source. And as you can see, we're doing it in pretty high speed. Um, so, really Ares, yep. th this is fantastic, but it brings up a question in my mind. You mentioned when you were setting up your replication group that the tables do not yet exist in Postgres. Does that mean that you actually interpret the DML, or not? sorry, not the DML, the DDL, from Oracle, your Oracle source to your Postgres to automatically create the tables? Exactly. So I'll show that in a second. So let's go okay. back into dBeaver. So now if I go into the Postgres, right, if I do a refresh here on the tables, you'll see that I have all the five tables. And let's see what's, how we're doing in terms of the load. So I need to, the connection is gonna invalidate and reconnect in a second. It timed out in the meanwhile. Uh, so by the time we finish this query, I do expect all the data already to be in Postgres. So not only we created the table, we also loaded all the tables. So you see, we have the five tables here, all loaded with all the data, right? 500,000 records each. So yeah, definitely JD, we do uh, in, um, interpret the, the DDL, we convert it to Postgres syntax and we create the tables if you choose to do so. And in this case, we have chosen to do so. So, um, so we have all the tables set. Now we have um, the initial capture of the data there. So now let's do some stuff. Uh, if I go back, by the way, back to the UI, you will see that data stopped loading because naturally all the data was loaded. Uh, so we stopped reading. Uh, that was pretty quick. And again, we can handle up to millions of events per second um, uh, in Equalum very, very easily. We've done that in, for different customers. So um, depending of course on resources, hardware and so on. So uh, the first thing I wanna do here is um, in the source, um, I, I just chose one of the tables and I query uh, table number one where a certain column equals, equals zero. And you'll see, I don't have uh, any such record. I go to, if I go to the target, I have the same query ready. Of course, nothing is here as well. If I go ahead and I'll update, you know, this table and I'll, I'll just update 5,000 records, right? So now if I query, I have, I expect to have in the source 5,000 tables uh, updated. If I go to the target, you'll see that they're already there. So in the few seconds since I updated and switched to this tab, 
we replicated the 5,000 changes already to the target. So um, this is the speed you should expect, right? Thousand or tens of thousands of changes per second uh, replicated from source to target. So for any operational system, um, this, is, this is great, right? You can use your data in your, in your target system, in your uh, uh, data warehouse or data lake or any other system pretty much as soon as the data is created in the source. I have and, a question on that. Sure. Um, sure. It is going to, I, I would guess, explicitly uh, qualify. There's two parts to this question. One, is there an assumption of a primary key? Yeah. Um, so for replication scenarios, um, we, we do require a primary key because we do want to, at the end of the day, update the target based on the primary key to either insert, update, or delete. So we do need uh, a primary key involved. But you okay. can do uh, other processes without a primary key if you, don't, if you do not wish to update the data and just append it. Yeah, and that, that's actually a common requirement. So if, if there's people online, they're like, well, I don't have primary keys. Well, if you're doing any kind of logical replication or logical decoding, you're going to need it, uh, in, even if you were just using normal Postgres replication that was logical. So um, one, one thing, be, before the second thing, one thing, it, it, you did mention logical, and that is the key here. If we have a physical primary key, we'll use that. If you do not have a, a physical primary key, you can still define what we call a user-defined primary key in Equalum, which is a logical primary key on, in the source, which we can apply to the target. Oh, good. So the, the second part of that would be, and this really only applies to update and deletes. I'm assuming that you're not creating some kind of long running update DML. You're just updating the values based on the primary key or deleting the values based on the primary key. Exactly, exactly. Okay, good, that's very efficient. Yeah, otherwise we cannot be real time in any manner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Um, so, um, so we've seen that. Now I wanna show uh, a bit, another example of schema evolution of adding a column. So in the Oracle system, I'll just add a column uh, you can take a look in the Postgres, right, table one. If I look at the list of columns, right, wait a second, I'll open the columns. I'll just refresh for sure. And um, you'll see that with the last column here is called cat all nulls, whatever. Um, same, of course, applies to the source because it's the same table. We just replicated it. But now what I want to do is I want to add a new column and I'll call it in a very... Um, you know, uh, a very unique way. I'll call it new call, new column. And I'll just update that column, um, for, uh, just update one row with that column. That's, the, of course, on the Oracle side. If I go to the Postgres side right here <clears throat> and I'll refresh, you'll see that now <clears throat> we have the new column on the target as well. So we don't only replicate DML in real time, we also replicate DDL in real time. And like, like JD mentioned, uh, this is actually translated from the Oracle DDL that happened to the Postgres DDL. That's a fantastic feature. Uh, Postgres, current Postgres uh, logical replication without its own add-ons does not support that. You would actually have to modify it by hand. And the fact that we can do that live from Oracle, uh, that's a very powerful feature that I don't think people... I don't think that should be undersold, let's put it that way, because it takes a lot of effort out of the DBA's hands and having to worry about all you know, the lovely application developers that are arbitrary, arbitrarily changing the schema. Yeah, for sure. That is, I mean, when you talk about replication, you want your replication process to run 24 seven and you want it to succeed, right? You need the data in real time in the target. So um, in order to now not the, break the replication, yeah, you have to pop, propagate schema changes, yeah. Right, and I did just get a, a direct question on this, which is appropriate. Um, we're assuming that it's not just legacy Oracle that supported it, it's any of your supported sources that you will support the DDL replication? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, basically, DDLs are for you know, databases, so any database source can be replicated to any database target. We'll do the conversion in between. So I want to show one more thing before we open up for questions, I think. Um, and then I, we talked about replication. Um, and you see how easy it is to, um, uh, to create replication groups in Equalum, replicate any number of tables, any number of changes uh, from the source to the target. 
Um, uh, everything is also monitored. So you see the statuses here, everything we, is, it has a status. If something breaks, if I go in, each replication group object has a status. If it changes for some reason from active to pause or error or whatever, I'll get an email uh, that can be configured. We have a lot of metrics going on that you can, uh, we have a metric explorer. I mean, you have a lot of metrics in the UI, but you also have uh, an add-on, uh, which is uh, uh, Grafana, if you're familiar, uh, which is our metric viewer that stores hundreds and hundreds of metrics if you wanna uh, kind of troubleshoot and, and analyze them. Uh, but, but obviously what you really wanna do is do your actual work and get notified via email if something breaks. And that is out of the box with Equinum. The one last thing I wanted to show is, um, and just like in two minutes, is uh, we talked about replication mode, but Equinum also have another mode, and that is the real-time ETL or real-time data ingestion mode where you can also do some transformations. So just to quickly show you that, um, if I go into uh, the Oracle source, uh, I, you see the, um, the tables we brought in uh, via the replication group are created as what we call streams. And the streams are processed by what we call flows. Uh, the flows we use for replication are, as you expect, source to target. But if I go ahead and create my, my own flow, I can then really leverage Equilum's uh, ETL or transformation capability. So if I just grab one of the tables, you see that, and this is where the zero coding part comes in, I have a bunch of op operators that I can uh, perform on the data. I won't cover all of them. I will just choose one of them, the transform operator. So although I got the data, and here's another cool feature, I can preview the data. So I, I get a glimpse of the data coming in from the source so I can you know, feel the data and kind of uh, know how to transform that. So uh, I have the schema coming in and I can decide to add a new column right? Uh, and I want to create a new column. Every time data comes in, I want to populate this column and push it to the target. So for example, if I want to concatenate, for example, two different fields, I don't need to write code. I just double click on concatenate. I double click on a bunch of fields. I better choose um, string fields, right? And I actually can concatenate a field with another text. Right? And this actually creates a new field in real time. The field is populated in real time, and then I can write it to my target. So it doesn't have to be a, a pure replication use case. It can actually be uh, uh, transformed as well. And again, we have a lot of different capabilities for this part. Uh, you can here, because it's not automated, you can, cre you can generate the create table yourself. So um, again, um, we can still, even though it's not automated, we can still help you generate the create statement, which is adapted to Postgres, right? Although it originated from Oracle, right? So if I change the table name, it will reflect here, and then I can just execute it in the target. Um, and there's a lot of more capabilities you can do in transformation, uh, like aggregating data, like doing lookups and enrichment, like logging errors, logical errors in the flow, and a lot, a lot of other capabilities that I think we'll save for another webinar in the future. Uh, so JD, that is what I was able to kind of, you know, cover in, in the time frame. Um, I'll hand it, up, hand it back to you. Okay. Uh, we did have another question come up, which I think is interesting. Uh, how do we handle triggers and indexes? So if your source has a series of triggers or a source of indexes, are triggers replicated, are indexes replicated, are both, or one, or something yeah. like that? Yeah, good question. So Equilum is about data replication and not necessarily schema or database replication. Equilum replicates data in real time. Um, so it's not a database migration tool per se, it replicates the data. So if you wanna uh, replicate your indexes and your uh, code, your stored procedures and stuff, uh, you might want to use a one-time uh, tool to, to create your schema, but you then need uh, uh, Equilum to kind of load your initial data and keep databases in sync uh, for the migration process. So we do not replicate indexes because more, more often than not, indexes on the source will be different than indexes on the target because the purpose of the system is different. So indexes That's will true. be different. 
especially so if you're migrating from say an OLTP to a OLAP database or something like that. Exactly, it's, it's a whole different structure, uh, different indexes and so on. So we do not replicate, although we, we can very easily do that, we find that um, you know, not a requirement for mo most use cases. Um, so we replicate the data and of course DDL, but we will not replicate your sort procedures and indexes because that's up for you, up to you to decide how you want to use them in the term. Okay, so we have we have a question: Is that is this a good tool for pulling in all Oracle databases we have into our new Postgres systems? Now, I actually think I can answer this. Um, <laughs> I would say yes, it is. Uh, it's an excellent tool for that. Uh, mainly because you can have multiple ingestion sources as well as uh, destinations. And as you do your, it, it also allows you to do your transformations, which is very important. Oracle doesn't have, for example, the Oracle number format. There's no equivalent in Postgres because Postgres is strictly typed. Um, and there's also other things that you might be doing. For example, you might have a uh, a constrained column to simulate Boolean, whereas Postgres has an actual Boolean. So being able to live transform your Oracle data and ingest it into Postgres in the way that Postgres is going to expect it to be would be highly valuable. Plus, since you can't just do an overnight transformation, a lot of times you're in a situation where you are live replicating for a period of time, sometimes a long period of time, as the applications are being tested against both sources. As those applications change and DDL changes, those DDL changes are also going to automatically replicate to Postgres. Yeah, JD, um, I think you covered it the best possible. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Well, Equalum can be found at www.equalum.io, and they also have the ability to download a demo for your testing purposes. Uh, your information will be provided to Equalum so that you guys can start a relationship and hopefully build something out to get everything off of Legacy Oracle. Everyone have <laughs> a great day, and thanks for attending. Thank you, everyone.